The headlines today, Tigray president has called on the international community to call all of the atrocities that are currently taking place in the north of Tigray atrocities as a genocide and label it finally as a genocide. The humanitarian access map shows the Ethiopian and Eritrean government's policy of wiping out the population of the civilians of Tigray and displaced Tigrayans children take to drawing to tell the story of a conflict and a little bit of hope. The main stories for today, Tigray's president calls on the international community to label all of these atrocities that are currently being committed in Tigray, finally labeling it as a genocide. Tigray government says it will work to bring the Amhara expansionists and their leaders to court of law for the atrocities they committed on the people and their infrastructure. President of Tigray, Debrati on Gabra Mikhail, yesterday gave a statement regarding the Tigrayans who were brutally burned to death in Metagal area of Ethiopia's Benchangul Gumuz region. In the statement, Debrati on said the victims were set free by a court and given travel permits. He also said the information gathered so far indicates about 30 Tigrayans have been brutally murdered, 250 saved their lives by fleeing to Sudan. Let's take a listen. كلهم كردوا ذلوا لازم دنا حزبات بتاعتيهم ذلوا it should be clear to everyone that the expansionist leaders of Amhara region and their elites are the ones who orchestrated all these atrocities by destroying the social fabric the armed groups committing these crimes are being deployed and led by the shameful traitors all those leading and fanning the atrocities will be brought to justice we will hunt them down no one of these bands and barbarism will be spared. We have seen how the people of Tigray, adhering to its values and international law, is treating prisoners of who committed and told atrocities. We will also see how it will bring them to the court of law. <laughs> The president also had this message to the international community. My message to the international community is, call the atrocities being perpetrated against the people of Tigray by its name. Why discriminate between black and white to designate it as a genocide? Such a double standard and justice is unacceptable. How many Tigrayans do you want to see killed to call it a genocide? How many Tigrayans have to suffer injustice? We are watching. Everybody's watching. You will be held accountable. He also expressed his condolences to the families of the deceased in the particular area of the people of Tigray in general. Opposition political parties in Tigray Independence Party, Salsa Wayana, and civil society organizations called on the Tigray Human Rights Advocacy Network and also condemned the burning alive of the Tigrayans in Benchangul Gamuz region that was viral on all social media platforms throughout the weekend. As we move on to our next story, humanitarian access map shows Ethiopian and Eritrean government's policy of wiping out the entire population of Tigray. The northern Ethiopia humanitarian access map shows most of Tigray in red, meaning most of the regions can't be reached by aid agencies. Horn of Africa analyst Martin Plot, commenting on the access map, said the siege by a siege of Ethiopians and the Eritrean government is designed to wipe out the entire population. He said the old and very young are most affected, dying horrific, painful deaths. In related news, drought and diversion of international attention to the Ukraine crisis are exasperating the suffering of Tigrayans in the northern region of Ethiopia. And Aloina Sinenko, a regional spokesperson with the international community of Red Cross, said a lot more humanitarian effort is needed to be responded to the humanitarian needs of people, adding that people are going without the most essential basic services like health care, water, and food. In January, the UN World Food Program said that almost 40% of Tigrayans are currently suffering an extreme lack of food, while 13% of them are Tigrayan children 
just under five, and half of the all pregnant and breastfeeding women are also extremely malnourished as well. Noting that the global media attention has very much been on the Ukraine crisis in the past several weeks, Aloina added that the world should not forget that the needs are very high, even though the media attention is not always there. The IDP children displaced to grind children's take to drawing to tell the story of conflict as well as hope. Tim Neath Bayrou presents this future by Adi Standard. Let's take a listen. 18-year-old Nazanet Fusaha is one of the 2.1 million people who have been displaced due to conflict in northern Ethiopia. She is staying in Sawakari, internally displaced camp in Ma'ala, the capital city of Tigray, where over 9,000 IDPs reside. She has been here for five months and despite the fact she has been separated from her family due to the fighting, she is a proud volunteer at UNICEF-supported Beite, My Home Temporary Learning Center, which provides integrated education and protection services. Nazanna teaches children to draw to help them express their feelings about the conflict. She believes a picture can tell a thousand words. I enjoy drawing as instead of expressing myself in words, I can express myself better in drawing, she said. It comes easier when you put words into a picture. I draw when I feel stressed, and it always makes me feel better. She teaches children how to draw and also shows them her drawings and asks them what the drawings mean to get younger children to share their feelings. She explains to the children that this drawing is of a mother who, despite the fighting around her, is determined to protect her baby. I keep my drawings simple for the children so they can understand what they mean, and then I encourage them to draw about their experiences. Ms. Anit said, Nazanet also has her own set of drawings, which tell a story of sadness and strength. This is the first drawing in a story, she said. She's a beautiful lady, and the flower shows her beauty, but society is undermining her. The wolf is dominating and very strong and is attacking her, exposing her to violence. The second drawing is the same woman who is full of shame because she has been raped. This is the same lady, and you can see she's very small and her dress is disorganized. Nazanet said with tears in her eyes. This is all about her desperation and how she has lost all hope. Nazanet calls the final drawing in this story the widow of hope. She has had counseling now and she has hope and feels there is a future for her. She says with a smile on her face. As the children of Tigray cling on to the little bit of hope they have left, the head of the World Health Organization says there's nowhere on earth where the health and the millions of people is more under threat currently than Ethiopia's Tigray region. As much of the world's attention is currently focused on the bloodshed that's taking place in Ukraine, the head of the World Health Organization, Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, said on Wednesday that the world's worst health crisis is currently in Tigray, Ethiopia. The situation in Tigray is catastrophic. The blockade on communications, including on journalists being able to report from Tigray, means it remains a forgotten crisis. Out of sight and out of mind. Yes, I'm from Tigray. And this crisis affects me, my family and my friends, very personally. But as the Director General of WHO, I have a duty to protect and promote health wherever it's under threat. And there is nowhere on earth where the health of millions of people is more under threat than in Tigray. Just as we continue to call on Russia to make peace in Ukraine, so we continue to call on Ethiopia and Eritrea to end the blockade, the siege, and allow safe access for humanitarian supplies and workers to save lives. Peace is the only solution in Ukraine, Yemen, Afghanistan, and Ethiopia. No food aid has been delivered since the middle of December. And Tedros told the press briefing, adding that about three quarters of health facilities assessed by WHO in the region had been destroyed completely. And he said that there was no treatment for about 40,000 people 
with HIV currently within the region. Tedros Adhanom said the UN Health Agency had now documented 43 attacks on healthcare workers, facilities in Ukraine, as well as since the Russian invasion began last month. Tedro said that the crisis in Ukraine was far from the only crisis to which WHO is currently responding to, citing there's current ongoing problems in Yemen, Syria, as well as Ethiopia. Meanwhile, the UN has canceled humanitarian flights into Tigray, and there's credible indication that Ethiopian's regime is currently about to conduct serious international law violations as well. As we move on to our final story for today, a missed worsening humanitarian crisis there are reports that the Ethiopian government is preparing for war. Horner of Africa analyst Rashid Abdi said Ethiopia is rearming with help from the usual suspects. He's writing on his official Twitter account, talk of peace, dialogue sounds extremely hollow. Mediation stalled, expect return to full scale war. The Ethiopian government has also continued to train huge number of recruits on this ongoing conflict and civil war within the country of Ethiopia. That concludes our news for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye-bye.